Next up, this is this is my favorite right here. Watch how fast this guy is. He's quick. Oh god. Now gets the fork, headset, puts the fork in, headset's on. I can't even say it faster than he does it. Oh my god, it's he's you're a savage. He's a savage. Okay, okay, so uh, we're, we've been in China for a long time and a lot of you guys have obviously been seeing me kind of cruising around the factory and things like that and I've been telling you for a little while now that I'm gonna show you guys the MB factory and today, today is that day. So, this is the most important person in the entire factory. Awesome, come here. Okay, this is Ozzy. Ozzy is our boy right here. He is, the reason, oh, he's gonna throw up. The reason he's so he's so important is because he's security. So no matter if, if there's any kind of robbery, anything like that, this is the, he's the one that actually makes sure nothing happens. So Ozzy, you made it in the vlog, dog. You made it in the vlog. To Ozzy, Jesus. One thing about Ozzy is, hang on. There is actually a part that's named after Ozzy, and that part is the Ozzy bar. You guys might have seen these in your local stores or seen a lot of people riding them right for the Fasten team. This is named after Ozzy. That's my boy. Anyways, let's get on with this entire tour. First up, this is Bogdan. Bogdan, wh wh why don't you tell, tell the Art Dog Club, tell them what you do for Envy and Fasten uh, and everything else here. Everything from everything, quality control, production, design here and there. He the dude, he the dude. <laughs> Whatever we need done. My man, he's important. Some of you guys might have seen some of the previous videos that I posted of me actually going to some of the other factories like the wheel factory, went to the forging factory, the CNC factory. So this is where all of those parts come together. Everything is put together as the entire scooter, put in the box, everything. This is the final stage right here. Stop number one of the entire process is obviously grabbing the decks. The decks, these are all, they're doing all the candy parties right now. Dang it. Dang it, it's so hard to do with one hand. Ah. As you guys can see, we got all the candy, the candy paint is all on there. We got the Prodigy logo on there. A lot of you guys see that with the grid tape, all that kind of stuff. So this is step number one. So this is where they all put all of the rear plastic inserts in. This is a new thing for Envy, so this is probably something that a lot of you guys may have seen before, but they put all of these into the back, just insert them in, and then this guy's actually doing all of the brake checks just to make sure that all the tolerances are correct, all of the, well, all, basically all the widths on that are all done correctly. So once that is done, it moves over to this area where She's checking to make sure there is no imperfections in the paint or any bends on the deck, anything like that, because if there are any bends on the deck, it goes onto another shelf where they're basically sent back to the factory where they came from to be redone or whatever we painted. And then you have the grip tape. Look at this massive stack of grip tape. This part has to be done very tediously because if that grip tape is put on incorrectly, then that's it. That's a whole piece of grip tape is gone. She has to start over and then the line gets screwed up and they have to roll her out to make sure it's all on completely flat. And then it starts the line. This is kind of a long line, so I'm trying to figure out what the best way to show all this stuff is. 12 seconds later. All right, so here we go. We're on the line right now. We have this deck right here. Now, first stop after the deck is on the line is your boy right here. So basically what this guy does is he grabs the deck, he puts, the he he puts like the head tube in this machine right here, and once he does that, he pounds those rear inserts in to make sure that they're all incorrectly. Also, that machine, it squashes down the head tube to make sure, it doesn't squash the head tube down, but it basically like makes sure that there's no other imperfections on the inside of the head tube right here where the headset goes. I just hit a few bumps and it freaked me out. And stop number two. He's gotta make sure that all the brakes go in and everything is tightened down correctly. So he's gonna grab our scoot right here. He's gonna put it up, put that front insert in as well. He pounds that one in and then he grabs his brake bolt, his brake, has the power drill. Oh no, oh no. Oh, okay, there you go, you caught one. That was that was an imperfection. So he had to see, he puts that one aside, puts another one on, and then oh, we, we gotta catch up. We, oh goodness, we're gonna lose our scooter. We can't lose our scooter. We're back, we're back in business. All right, now, brake bolt is in, brake is on, everything's tightened up. Now our next spot is your boy right here. Now, what he does, he's putting all the axles in and the back wheel. So he slides his back wheel in, puts it all inside that little holder right there. Also gets the power drill, tightens it in. Make sure the wheel is riding. Riding? Make sure the wheel is spinning correctly. Good to go. This is really hurting my butt. All right, now, our scooter has the back wheel. It's got the brake on. It's got the grid tape. It's already gone through a QC. Now, next up, this is this is my favorite right here. Watch how fast this guy is. He's quick. Oh, God. Now, gets the fork, headset. Puts the fork in, headset's on. I can't even say it faster than he does it. 
Oh my god, it's, he's, you're a savage. He's a savage. See how quickly he did that? You know how long that takes you back at home when I build my scooter? He did in like four seconds. So basically what he did is he tightened everything down. He made sure that the tolerance is on the headset were done correctly so that it spins in the right way. And he just got, we got another couple. So everything here is checked very carefully at Envy. So he's gonna grab the scooter and he's gonna do our dial test. Make sure everything is on correctly, making sure the headset spins, wheel spins. So his job is really, really important because if there's if there's anything wrong with this scooter, if there's anything wrong at all, he puts it on basically another line to where that scooter goes back and it's all redone at the end of the circle. The circle, the cycle. I'm really screwing this up right now. Checking the alignment, making sure everything's spinning. Oh, we got duds. We got another dud. I gotta start crawling again. Dang it. This just sucks. I don't like crawling on this thing. This thing's awkward. We need our scooter. Oh, we got a dial test. Okay, everything's good. Oh no, oh no, don't make me crawl. Don't make me crawl. Dang it! Sorry, man. I, I'm, I was trying to be, I would have been off the line by now. So, he's checking again. That one sounded good. Is that one good? It sounded good. Checking it. Is it good? Please tell me it's good. Thank God, we don't have to crawl anymore. So he's grabbing his sticker, grabs the sticker, puts it on the deck. That is basically the first, I gotta sit up a little bit. That's the first, okay. Now, that QC is done, it's ready to go. Now we're going over to packaging. There you go, how you doing? Oh, he's quick too, oh man, holy crap. Look at the zip ties, the zip ties on, packaged, I'm ready to go. And then after he's done with that, he puts it over there. So we, lost, we just lost our scooter, but. That means that our scooter passed all the necessary tests, and now that means I can get off my butt because it hurts so bad. Get in a box, we're going to Australia. We're going to Australia? I love boxes. All right, so this is our package. It, this is about to go to Australia. Do we have tape? Yeah. Have tape, we'll anyone? Tape. Hang on, Yin. We're making sure you're safe. Don't go anywhere. We are safe, Yin. We got your back, buddy. Boom. Boom. Ready to go. So that is going to Australia. Have a good flight. Be safe. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Yeah. So here are all of our scooters all packaged up, ready to go. So these are all being prepared to put into their boxes, which gets put into a bigger box to get ready to go to their destination. So our boy over here just grabbed two. Now we have all the boxes. But before we actually move on, look at how handsome that man is. Who that? Look at how handsome that man is. That's the sexiest box I've ever seen. I just want to let you know. So he is putting all the cardboard in there. And all, basically what this cardboard does is that's making sure that the deck and the wheels and everything that's put together is staying away from the bar so that nothing is, gets scratched up, nothing gets banged together. And here he comes, putting them all in. My dude, boom, ready to go. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering where are the bars? All the bars are over here. So all of these scooter bars are all ready to go. Here's some Colt bars. We have some Prodigy bars right here. We got more Prodigy bars. Uh, these look like they are soul bars. We have some more Prodigy bars. So these are all the bars that obviously you're gonna be putting to all of these packages when they're ready to go. They're all sent. All those packages are taped up, sent out to this back room over here, which is where we're gonna go right now. So right now is actually a slow time for them. Normally, like during Christmas time, this entire warehouse, like all this area right here is just full of scooters, um, all of the decks, everything. Just tons of stuff all over the place. So it's kind of nice that we're actually catching it like this uh, because I get to move around. If it was a little more full, we might have a couple issues. And plus there'd be a lot more people in here. I can tell you that right now. Let's see what we got in here. All right, we got some forks with some 120 millimeter wheels on there. We got, these are some, oh, these are MV Colt forks right here. Probably these are some more forks that are just basically wrapped up. I don't really want to open them right now because it's going to take forever and I only have one hand. Got some more. Oh, here we go. Got some uh, more. We got some oil stick wheels. Just all kinds of extra stuff right here that those will all be put onto more scooters. Now, all of these boxes right here are all full of scooters, uh, scooter bars. There's AOS decks over here. There's all kinds of stuff in these boxes right here. And all these are orders that, my man, my man, he got the lights. You're like Jesus. All of these boxes are all going to Dubai. So for those of you guys that were wondering if we do sell in Dubai, yes, we do. There are scooter riders in Dubai. I went there not that long ago and it was awesome. Okay, I really need that Jesus guy right now. Dang it. I was hoping it would be a little bit more lit up back here, but you guys can see me a little bit if I really stand up. But anyways, these are all um, packages that are basically in stages. Now stages means that all of these are also going to all kinds of different MV retailers, um, other distributors, things like that. So these are all already pre-packaged, ready to go, but these also have to be counted for inventory and all those kinds of things to make sure that none of the uh, orders are screwed up. There's no miscounted anything. So, and after these are all counted correctly and they're all checked off, 
they're all put into a container and it's sent off to all the different parts of the world. So some of these might be going to Australia, some of these might be going all throughout Europe, America. So yep, that's how that goes. But I know I was back here the other day and I found a couple gems. Okay, so what's back here? Okay, so these are all stickers. So you got some blunt stickers right here. Got the Envy stickers. Uh, oh, we got some uh, KOS. These looks like, yeah, they're the charge stickers, soul stickers. Um, what's up in here? Oh, here we go. We got some of the, these are some of the graphics for the hollow chorus. So you guys can kind of see that they're changing colors a little bit. So that's where all these are kept. And there are tons of them, you guys. So these are all going on certain wheels. Also back here, what have we got? Oh, more, more hollow chorus, things like that. So these, this is basically like the sticker section. So these are some of the stickers that my boy's putting on after the scooters are basically checked and ready to go after they go through the last QC on that line. These are all those stickers, but these ones are for Prodigy S6s. These are Cole S3s, and these are E1s. So, yeah, all kinds of different stickers back here. We also have some of the packaging for nylon brakes. Oh, what do we got in here? These look like they're fork boxes. Yep, fork. Oh, no. Yeah, fork boxes. Got some more fork boxes right here. Fasten fork boxes. This deck right here are all, um, this is all full of owner's manuals that the, every single MV scooter comes with. So, if you guys don't read your owner's manual, you might want to just to make sure that you guys know all about your warranty and things like that. And this is all a back section of the first floor. And yes, I did say first floor. There are multiple floors here at Envy Scooters, and we're gonna go explore some of the other goodies that they have in the other floor. So, oh, what? Okay, so this is the very first um, 26 millimeter PU that Envy made. So this was like one of the test wheels. It looks like it's on a CNC fork. More stickers, things like that, other goodies. So these are like little bags that you can put like tools in or whatever. Tons and tons, stacks on stacks of keychains. A bunch more stickers back there. Just all kinds of stuff back here, you guys. Just all kinds of stuff. And this is my section right here. This is where I lift them weights. You know, this is where I get my buff on. You know what I'm saying? Like a bam. So let's see what we got in here. These are, look like, oh, these are boxes of, these are 110 hollow course. So these are actually the same wheels that I'm riding right now, which it's kind of cool to see them in their actual boxes because I don't get them in the boxes. I just get them as the wheels. Okay, here we go. Here's a little throwback for you guys. We have some fasten spiral bars. Now these things are ancient. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these bars before. Some of you guys might have only been riding for about a year or so, and that's about the time, um, actually a little longer than that, where these bars were all discontinued. Um, let's see, we, oh my gosh, RIP, RIP. Little history lesson for you guys. Envy actually used to make Phoenix scooters all here and well, not in this factory because they would have moved, but they used to actually make all of Phoenix's stuff. So that all fell through, people got dirty, and we have some more 110 wheels back here. You got all kinds of fasten and Envy stuff up there. That's all like super old stuff as well. Like I see up here, it says stripper bars. Stripper bars are like some of the first bars that Envy ever made. That looks like that's all the first floor that you guys can see, but I wanna show you guys how deep this is. And these are all orders that are already ready to go. Look at how far. So you can see how far away this door is. You guys can see how wide this this um, this floor is. Full. It's really cool to see how many scooters that there actually are in here. We've got a couple ones. So anyways, oh, I actually want one of these for my house. So Envy or anybody from Envy for watching this, which I know you are, I want one of those rugs. Let me get one of those rugs. Anyways, next floor. Okay, so I'm on my way downstairs and I, I just found something that nobody has actually seen before. This, this isn't just an ATS scooter. This is an ATS electric scooter. This, this bottom floor is kind of big, so I'm gonna use this to cruise around. Okay, so this is the entire bottom floor. This is another area where they're keeping um, some, some stock. It's pretty low right now. This is, for a lot of you guys that are watching this right now, probably think that, it, like if I go over to this section, for example, this section, to a lot of you guys that are watching this video right now, this probably looks super stocked because of the fact that there's decks, things like that, but this is super low right now. Normally, like during Christmas, they have this entire place full. Like where I'm standing right now, this is like a big square. And inside the square, it's just full of boxes. Kind of like when I took you guys to that staging area. Um, that same idea. So we're cruising around and I forgot my scooter. All right, so what do we got over here? So over here, it looks like we have some KOS decks. So these are all being prepared to go over to anodizing and or powder coating, things like that. And uh, let's see over here, looks like we got some AOS decks. This, this is probably, is there any design? Nope, same idea. Obviously you got some of the older Waza decks, not many of them though. Couple more AOS V4 decks. So one thing about AOS V4 decks, but when, when they go to the actual anodizer or when they go to get oil sick or something like that, usually they have to be polished first just to make sure that it gets that shine. That's why my deck's kind of that shiny blue. It's not just like a flat blue, like you guys might see on a lot of other companies. Uh, that's because it has to be polished first. So. That's, there's a little bit of stuff right there for you. So let's keep on moving back because obviously, like I said, this place isn't small. 
Dude, I love this scooter. You just push. Now watch. I just push, and it'll carry the speed that I'm that I pushed at for as long as it for as long as it can, basically until it dies. So I don't have to push at all. Nothing. I can just keep on going, just keep cruising. But it's why am I going so far? I need to turn around. But it gets to the point where I'm so used to just riding my normal scooter that I put my foot off and push anyway. So it kind of defeats the purpose. I'm not used to it yet. Oh, okay, so we got some more bins over here. Inside we got some bars. Looks like these are Reaper V3 bars. No, sorry, those are Reaper V2s, my bad. V2 Reapers in here, what do we got in here? Some fasten bars right here. Okay, here we go, here's some Reaper V3s. You guys can see like the little, the Reaper right there is a little bit different, flat black. Um, Reaper V2s, and here probably some more, oh, no, these are not Reapers, these are, this is a two-piece bar that you guys see on the E1. They have so many bars, it's like my future rap game. And turning around over here, it looks like we have some fasten grips. So this would be a box full of fasten grips. Probably all fastens, yeah, it's fasten. So this is probably like a whole fasten grip section. Bar ends, probably fasten. Nope, no, these are MV bar ends. So that means that MVTPR grips are really close by. Got some glow in the dark. Let's go over to this side. So over here we have some more like miscellaneous stuff. I know what is in these bags. So inside all these bags, what do you guys think is in those bags? Let me tell you something. What, what it is, is you're going to be amazed right now as to the amount because I've never actually seen this many in one spot. Inside of all these bags right here, this, these bags are full of Allen wrenches. These, this is full. Like, these are all this mad Allen wrenches inside of there. Look, Allen wrenches, Allen wrenches, Allen wrenches. And let me tell you something. These bags, they're not light. There we go. There's like a good lit up shot right there for you guys. Tons and tons of Allen wrenches. That's every scooter kid's dad's dream because we constantly steal all their Allen wrenches. So dads, if you're watching, sorry. I keep forgetting my scooter. Stop leaving. Once I finally get one of these, RIP to walking. I'm not going anywhere. I'm literally gonna ride my electric scooter to the skate park, get to the skate park, whip out my normal scooter, and not touch the ground once. Looks like there's a lot of stuff right here, but what is it? Okay, so these are all KOS decks, same idea. These would all be being prepared to go upstairs so they can all be put together. These are specifically charge decks, but actually these could be being sold individually. I'm not 100% sure, but if it was my guess, they'd be going upstairs. There's a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff over here. I'm not gonna show you guys the entire factory, like start to finish every single part, because if I did that, that would be, why am I walking? That would be kind of, I, I don't want to say it'd be pointless, but it, it would make this video like a, an hour long video. We don't want that. We don't want this video to be that long, but we're gonna move further back here, which is one of my favorite areas, but it's kind of dark. All right, so we got my cell phone flashlight out for this section, so sorry about the, the darkness, but we have a bunch of decks that have not been welded yet. So one of the, one of the things about MV is all of the welding is done here in-house. Just full of decks. You got Prodigy decks, there's AOSV4 decks, there's all kinds of things like that. And over here you can find a bunch of different head tubes, AOSV4 head tubes, AOSV4 head tubes. So we got more head tubes over here. These are Colt and Prodigy head tubes. We have the actual gooseneck part. Boom, you guys can tell it. That looks like it's for a Prodigy. There was literally no reason to push that back. I just wanted to do it because I like the sound. So back here, this is the whole weld section. So these are all decks that are all being tack welded. Now a tack weld, basically what a tack weld is, is it's basically when the, the head tube is actually welded on, but it's just a tack, so it's just a dot. So that just holds it on in place. And when they do that, they do all that kind of stuff right over here. So basically what they do is they'll put the head tube in here. This jig will hold everything still. Same idea right here. So this would go down straight on the deck. Hold it, put it, flat. I freaked out. Oh Jesus. I gotta make sure I can see. Oh God, I can't see anything. So once the deck is in there, it's just spot welded, like I said, which they call the tack weld. And once that is done, it is all put over there into giant piles, which every single one of those still needs to be welded completely, which they would do further on down the line. Here we've got all kinds of welding material. I don't know why this is here, but there's like a melted head tube, so all kinds of stuff goes into this. Oh man. I don't know what happened there. That bar probably went through heat treating and just maybe got dropped or something like that. Basically what heat treating is, is that's a step where every single one of these bars goes into. So for those of you guys that are wondering, what it means basically is the bar is heated up. And once that bar is heated up, it makes the bar, the actual metal, it's stronger, the bond is stronger where the weld is, so every single bar that comes through MV has to go through heat treating. Whether it's aluminum, whether it's chromoly, it doesn't matter, it all goes through heat treating. Once the bar or deck or whatever it is, is welded, or at least tack welded, and then finished welding along the line, it goes into the back area. Once the bar or deck or whatever's being welded is finished, it's welded completely, done, 
it gets that that big sticker basically so you guys know that um like on the bottom of my deck the whole bertha design that's all a sticker and then the sticker is heated up inside of this so this is basically it's, it's a giant oven you open this thing up might as well open both sides and it goes inside of here. Now in here, the decks or anything is, it basically would be coming out of here, hanging completely, no, nothing would be touching in here. And this is heated up. It's basically a big microwave. And inside the microwave, those are melted on and basically so they can't peel off super easily. And when they do peel off, it's, it's like if you grind it on it or something like that. So it's kind of cool that this is all able to be done in house. And it's a cool step to show you guys too, because I'll tell you right now, I've seen things like this, like, areas like this but I haven't seen one this big and I can imagine they can do a ton of decks and or bars at the same time which I think is cool once the bar deck has gone through that process it goes over here basically to cure to, or to dry whatever you want to call it um, these are all going to be misprints or something that would, they would have been just testing for example this bar right here we have a Reaper V3 bar that has the Reaper V3 on the front but on the back it has a Heist logo so this would have been something that they, maybe they would have been testing at some point and uh, just put it up here because they needed to cure and they wanted to test it. Obviously all of these ones are empty, but normally these would be completely full and there would just be tons of just, I don't, I don't wanna say chaos, but it would look gnarly, it would look chaotic. I did come through here the other day and there were a few more bars on here and it actually looked so gnarly. It was like, Bleh, so many bars, Gah. All right, now you guys have seen the factory. You see where everything has been done. You see where everything's put together. You saw my electric scooter, which I'm freaking hyped on. This is my last day in China. I'm actually pretty bummed about that because China has been a great time. I've actually super enjoyed it here. I wasn't really sure what it was gonna be like coming into it, but I am very, very glad I'm, that I came out here and just, I experienced China. I did China and I'm stoked. I'm gonna be out here hopefully again relatively soon, but until then, I'm out. Later China.